the entire agri-food sector bears the brunt of the climate crisis. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Proteste der Landwirte zeigen, wie wichtig der strategische Dialog ist. La PAC est plus du tiers du budget total de l'Union européenne. We have to find a new consensus on the future of agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to the 60 years of the Farm Accountancy Data Network Conference. The data network has been very important for policymakers at EU and national level, for farmers and for researchers alike. That's Elizabeth Werner, the European Commission's Director General for Agriculture and Rural Development. So this conference is not just about celebrating the past 60 years. We also mark the evolution of the network to become the Farm Sustainability Data Network or FSDN. The change from FADN to FSDN responds to realities for farming and reflects what affects the viability of farms like climate change, biodiversity loss, soil degradation, to name a few. It's a crucial evolution since farm economics include additional environmental and social dimensions to cover all aspects of sustainability. This message from Elizabeth Werner kicked off a conference on the 17th of October, which brought together all the stakeholders of the Farm Accountancy Data Network, FADN, in Brussels. This podcast is an opportunity to take stock of how far we have come, but also to consider what the transition from FADN to FSDN for Farm Sustainability Data Network actually means. What will be its added value? What challenges remain to be addressed? This is our topic for the 61st episode of Food for Europe. And to talk more about this, I'm joined now by Ben Toth, Deputy Head of the Analysis and Outlook Unit in the European Commission's Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development, DG Agri. Ben hello and welcome to Food for Europe. Hi, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start with a bit of background. How has FADN data been used in agricultural policymaking over the years? FADN is a very important source of data for the monitoring and evaluation of the current policy and for future CAP perspectives. So as the CAP has evolved over the years, so has the use of FADN uh, evolved. And actually, the recent evolution of the CAP integrated the objectives on the environment and social. And this is how we came to the FSDN. And looking now at the FSDN, how does it improve on FADN for research and policy evaluation? You have seen and heard in the presentations of the researchers that they are delighted to have access to such a very broad data at farm level. For them, this will be a, yeah, a goldmine, so to speak. For policy purposes, what is important, as I mentioned uh, before, is that the scope of FSDN will align with the evolving objectives of the CAP. So we will be collecting more variables with respect to environment and, uh, and social but also we are expanding the collection of economic variables as some economic variables have been neglected so far. Yes, I noted in those presentations, among other things, the issue of protected geographical indications and digitalization at the farm level. What will be the timeline for this transition to FSDN? So basically we have a phased in approach. We start in 2025 with a set of new variables and then we will expand in 2027 and the full implementation of FSDN should start as of 2028. However, during this phasing in period, we provide for exemptions for member states for justified reasons. And by the end of September 2027, we have committed to do a review of the implementation of uh, FSDN to ensure that we are on track and we are really providing extensive methodological and technical advice on a daily basis to our uh, contacts at the member states. Bensa, please stay with me so we can get some more reaction from you. So to understand what farmers have to gain from sharing their data with the FADN and now the FSDN, I spoke with Patricia Engelhardt Getzinger, a young Austrian farmer who was speaking on one of the conference uh, panels. The survivors of session three panels are Patricia Engelhardt Getzinger, um, farmer from the Bay of Gruner Engel Farm in Austria. 
Patricia Engelhardt Getzinger, hello and welcome to Food for Europe. Hi, I'm really happy to be with you here. It's a pleasure. So first, tell me about your farm. Yeah, we have an arable and vegetable farm in Austria. The farm is now managed by my husband and myself in the fifth generation. We manage around 60 hectares and our main product categories are green asparagus and pumpkins. Pumpkins for food and we produce also our own pumpkin seed oil. When did you start collecting data for the FADN? We have been collecting data since five years, but I can tell you collecting data, it's a way of culture in our family. So I can remember quite well that my grandparents and also my parents told me, you have to know about your figures, you have to know about your data, so you have clarity about your farm management. And this has feel very normal for us. How much extra work does it amount to? When I decided to take part, I remember quite well my husband saying no. No way. Hey, it's a lot of bureaucratic things. Now I can tell you he's a big fan of the system. In Austria, we get um, bookkeeping software for free. And I also have a supporting person who assists me from the beginning. So I never feel alone putting all the data in the system. And uh, the system in Austria is very well connected to other institutions. It means there will be not so much more work for us. But what's in it for you? Can you give me a concrete example of the added value for your farm? We get an annual report. That means I know my figures so we can make strategic decisions. For example, we saw that our pumpkin business brings more income with less efforts. So our decision was to invest more in the pumpkins and less in the potatoes. Another example is in Austria. If you are a young farmer under 40 years, you get some subsidies, but you have to provide some figures. And uh, with the software from our LSO agency, I have this data within five minutes. And based on your experience, does providing additional data, especially environmental and social data, represent a significant effort? So I had a look and I was thinking, wow, it's a lot of new data. But when I had a second look, I recognized that it's not much more work. And our software we use in Austria is very well connected. Some data is automatically in the system. So I'm very optimistic. And to be honest, I'm looking forward because we live sustainability. It's our daily business, but we never brought it on paper. And I think it's a great opportunity to get this, let's say, 360 degree holistic perspective about the farm. What do you think could help convince other farmers to contribute to the FSDN, the successor of the FADN? Trust, because you're giving a lot of data, so you have to trust the LSO agency and also to keep the anonymity of the farm data. I think this is a very important point for all the farmers who are interested in the program in the future. Thanks a lot, Patricia. It was a pleasure. Ben Sattot, Deputy Head of the Analysis and Outlook Unit at DG Agri. You've just heard Patricia's contribution to our podcast. On the issue of data anonymity, what guarantees do you give farmers? I can attest that trust is a fundamental issue with respect to the data network. So already now with FADN, the individual data is fully anonymized. And also in the future, we will make sure that this remains the case. And we will also ensure that the data is compiled so that uh, no individual farmer can be identified. Needless to say that we comply with all the high level of uh, data protection regulations that are applicable in the union. Okay, let's look now at the liaison agencies that assist farmers with data collection. I spoke to Kotra Kiet, who heads the FADN-FSDN unit at the Estonian Rural Research and Knowledge Centre. Kotra Kiet, welcome to Food for Europe. Thank you very much. Estonia joined the EU in 2004, right? So when did your country start to contribute to FADN? We started um, late 90s, even before we joined EU. We started with uh, 50 farms and it was done all on paper. 
Since uh, 2008, we have our own program in our unit, which is used for collection and feedback to our data providers. Now in uh, FADN, we have uh, 658 farms and uh, the data is collected by 18 uh, collectors. So we try to modernize our system so that everybody who wants to give us uh, data, they can uh, log in and put the data there themselves and see what is already there and they can compare with other averages, their own data. What factors specific to Estonia have made a particular impact on data collection? We have uh, rather big uh, holdings. For example, in average, their size is 130 hectares, which is three times EU average. So the bookkeeper knows everything if uh, there is some questions about finance. But uh, if we ask uh, how much you use the fertilizer, then uh, we should ask uh, somebody else in the same company. So this is one of the challenges we have there. Another one is uh, complexity of our uh, holding structure because, uh, for example, one owner could have three farms. In one there are cows and the production is occurred, but another one uh, sells this production and the third one is uh, producing feed. So it is uh, complex to put all those uh, data together. How do you encourage farmers to share their data? In Estonia, we always pay our data providers. But the main option is to make this uh, data work for data providers. We want to improve uh, this feedback we uh, make based on their data and uh, also involve uh, advisors so they can help data providers to use this data. Our main message in this collection is you can be involved in policy making. Also, since last year, we organized a award event for those data providers to highlight their contribution into data network. What challenges will you face in transforming FADN into FSDN in Estonia? There are many challenges to collect this data because uh, everybody says there is no time. Encouraging the participation in data network is uh, everyday work for us. Also, broader challenge is that Estonia has made decision that uh, we collect less data and uh, we decrease the administrative burden of our producers. So we should be ready to explain why we are on the opposite direction. Thank you very much, Kotra Kiet from Estonia. Bensetoth, let's have your thoughts on this. How can DG Agri respond to the difficulties outlined by Kotra Kiet in Estonia, which may also affect other member states. We acknowledge from the beginning that this is no walk in the park for any of the stakeholders, so for farmers, for data collectors, for national authorities and even the Commission. The opportunities uh, coming with FSDN have challenges that we need to address. And we have worked very closely together with the member states to make sure that we provide solutions. So these solutions are in the financial resources that we make available for member states. So they got a one-off setting up support to make their uh, systems adapted to FSDN. And there is also now a higher annual financing to operationalize the annual uh, uh, data collection. And on the issue of administrative burden, does collecting additional data for the FSDN run counter to the simplification efforts proposed by the European Commission? So in the current political climate, we know that simplification is a very important element. However, FSDN doesn't concern all the farmers. So basically from a population of around 9 million farmers, the FSDN sample is at currently 75,000. So it concerns less than 1% of the farming population. And what is even more important is that participating in FSDN is basically voluntary. You see the community brings together a variety of stakeholders. So let's see, so far the winning category is researchers and data analysts. Among the conference participants, academic research was strongly represented. The work of researchers is essential to give meaning to the data and evaluate the impact of public policies. We then have um, uh, uh, Alessandra Kirsch. 
Alessandra Kirsch, welcome to Food for Europe. You are an agricultural engineer and an expert in economics and agricultural policy in France. You've used FADN data in your research. Tell us more. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me. The aim of my research was to find out whether farms that make the greatest efforts to protect the environment receive more support from the CAP. The FADN data is the only database that is updated annually and exists in every member state. This means that comparisons can be made between member states and also on an annual basis to see whether successive CAP reforms have made it possible to better target aid towards farms that are making greater efforts. How has your work been used by the European Commission? This work was very useful because it provided an overview of the situation at the time I wrote my thesis in 2013, but it has also been updated this year. And it's very interesting because at the time the results were mixed. In fact, as reforms progressed, a rebalancing of per hectare aid under the first pillar ultimately enabled aid under the second pillar to play its full role. Today, we can see that farms produce cereals or with dairy cattle now receive more per hectare aid if they are among the most virtuous. And we can see that beef cattle farms per animal unit also receive more aid when they are more environmentally efficient. What do you think will be the added value of FSDN for the scientific community and for policymakers? The methodology I developed is actually very interesting, but it does not allow for a detailed measurement of environmental performance because it was developed using accounting data. The advantage of the evolution from FADN to FSDN is that we will have additional data on practices that will enable us to refine this methodology with data that will be technical this time. However, there is is a risk. We really need to limit ourselves to adopting definitions that are very, very clear and leave no room for interpretation by the people who will be collecting this data. So, in my opinion, it is better not to be too greedy, to have few variables and clearly define the scope from the outset. Thanks a lot, Alessandra Kirsch. Merci à vous et merci pour l'invitation. Au plaisir. Benzatot, Alessandra Kirsch there was urging caution about the choice and definition of new FSDN variables. What can you say about this? I can reassure her that we're doing our best, indeed, to have the best definition of variables that uh, provide for coherence, consistency, quality and ease of collection. Finally, Pensa, why not simply entrust the collection of agricultural data to Eurostat, the statistical office? of the European Union. Because we have been doing it for 60 years and we do it best. But joke aside, maybe the most relevant answer to this uh, question is to look at the N in FADN or FSDN, so the network. This uh, involves a really close cooperation with relevant stakeholders, liaison agencies, data collectors and farmers. So it goes beyond a purely statistics. Thank you very much, Ben Sitot. Deputy Head of the Analysis and Outlook Unit at DG Agri. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to all my other guests for their contributions to this podcast. Patricia Engelhardt getzinger Kotra Kiert and Alessandra Kirsch. For further information, you can find the video of the entire conference held on the 17th of October on the European Commission's website. That's all for this 61st episode of Food for Europe. We'll be back soon with more on agriculture, food and rural development. And we look forward to your company next time. The entire agri-food sector bears the brunt of the climate crisis. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Proteste der Landwirte zeigen, wie wichtig der strategische Dialog ist. <laughs> La PAC est plus du tiers du budget total de l'Union européenne. We have to find a new consensus on the future of agriculture. <laughs>